Hi, it's Heather here. Uh, it's been a while since I have um, posted any videos. It's been, a, I think, almost two weeks. I'm really sorry about that. Um, it's back to school time, so I've been rushing around trying to get things ready for back to school. Um, so I haven't really had a chance to post, but there should be lots of posts coming soon because there's lots of stuff rattling around in my head that I want to share with you. And now I actually might be able to find the time since three of my kids are at school. Um, so today's post, what I um, am talking about here is a diagnosis I recently got um, from the hematologist. So if you've watched my other videos, you have seen um, some of the things that have happened to me with my pregnancies. Um, I'm going to recap a little bit about that, um, just touch on it, but if you are interested in knowing the stories about the details of what happened, um, look for the other videos on my channel. Um, so this diagnosis I got today, or recently, um, like I said, it's been a few weeks, um, there was something I tested for with my last pregnancy um, in the hospital. And that is um, called lupus anticoagulant. Um, it is an antibody that apparently was present in my blood. Um, I was tested back in January of this year. Um, now it is almost the end of August. So I was tested. Um, at that time, I was um, hemorrhaging and pregnant. So they said that pregnancy and uh, bleeding can cause a false positive you need to have subsequent testing done if you have a positive for lupus anticoagulant. So um, they told me to wait six months, test again. If that test is positive, then um, I'm positive. Um, so wait, I had to wait um, six months. So I'm a little more than six months postpartum now. Um, and I tested again, and sure enough, um, that is a positive. This is something that is acquired. It's not a genetic condition. Um, from what I understand, it is uh, more common to be like grouped in families, but it's not necessarily inherited. It's not like a, a gene or anything. Um, like I said, it's acquired. Um, they don't know at what point I acquired it, um, but I have it. So uh, oh, I recently found out one of my good friends from childhood, my best friend actually from childhood, um, has it as well. And, um, she told me that basically the doctors, um, told her that her blood is sticky. I guess that's what they would say. Sticky. Um, it's not necessarily going to cause problems, but it can cause blood clots and things like that. Um, uh, makes you more prone to it. Um, the other thing that they discovered is something called prothrombin gene mutation, um, which I believe is also called factor two. Um, I am not a medical professional at all. I just want to make a disclaimer here that um, what I'm telling you is from what I understand and it's not from um, a scientific medical background or anything like that. So um, prothrombin gene mutation, gene, you hear the word gene, is genetic. I was born with it. It's something I've had forever. Um, and every kid in my family has a 50% chance of having it. All my siblings, um, we have not had our parents tested. We don't know which parent carries it, but one of them carries it. If you carry it, your kids have a 50% chance of having it. And if you do have it, there's nothing you can do to change it. It's a gene and your kids will have a 50% chance of having it. So it doesn't dramatically affect people per se. Um, basically, uh, from what I have read statistically and what I was told by the doctor, the average healthy person has a one in a thousand chance of having a thrombotic event, such as a deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, some sort of a blood clot it can cause a stroke. It can, it can cause a heart attack. It can cause a stroke. Um, but anyway, one in a thousand, that's for a healthy person. That's the chance of having a clot. The prothrombin gene mutation ups that to 20 to 30 people in every thousand. So is it a huge number? No, 20 or 30 in a thousand is not a huge number. Um, but it is still, that's considering healthy. That's no other risk factors. Now, the statistics change if you have other risk factors, such as if you take hormonal birth control, if you're a smoker, 
if you are of advanced age, if you um, break a bone, if you are having a surgery, if you lead a sedentary lifestyle, if you are o overweight, especially if you're obese, um, and also finally, uh, pregnancy. Pregnancy is a huge um, risk factor for, for clotting problems. So if you have any of those things, they do recommend going on a blood thinner. And obviously, if you've had a thrombotic event in the past, if you have a history, then they recommend continuing blood thinners um, to prevent um, further clots from happening. Because I guess, I don't know why, but once you have a, a thrombotic event, you're more likely to have another thrombotic event. So um, anyway... That's what I found out for myself. Um, I also found out that one of my children is confirmed to have it. I have not had my other children tested yet. I will in the future, but there's generally not anything they do for children when they have it. Um, unless, of course, they break a bone or something like that, then maybe they would do something. I don't know. But anyway, um, so a little bit about, like I said, I'm going to touch on my history a little bit here. Um, anybody who, who uh, might be watching this and maybe has uh, prothrombin gene mutation or lupus anticoagulant or both like me, unlucky, um, you, this is important for you to know if you are pregnant or planning to become pregnant. So I've had seven pregnancies. Again, watch my other videos if you want to know more um, details, but just to touch on it. First pregnancy, completely healthy, healthy baby, no blood bleeding issues, no nothing. Okay. Second pregnancy, early miscarriage, like six and a half, seven weeks. Um, we never looked into why nothing abnormal happened to me. Third pregnancy, baby had a stroke in utero. Um, the stroke caused, uh, left behind a cyst. And he also has three different congenital abnormalities, um, of his brain. We do not know if that's related to the stroke or how it happened. But anyway, that is, um, there is a video on him. It's called my miracle boy. If you want to watch that video and hear more about him. Um, anyway, next pregnancy after him was a 15 week miscarriage, terrible situation. I had a subchorionic hematoma. That's a blood clot in your, my uterus. Um, developed that I started bleeding at 10 weeks and um, they said normally these things just bleed for a little bit and then absorb and then they go away and pregnancy is fine. 97% of the time, unfortunately, I was in the lucky 3% of the people. Um, I hemorrhaged for five weeks and ended up um, going into labor at 15 weeks. Baby, um, she didn't make it simply because I went into labor. Um, apparently, they said that she looked like she had survived all the way up until um, basically when my body decided that enough was enough. Um, terrible situation, did not require any blood transfusions, but, um, my body obviously clotted abnormally. Pregnancy after that, um, ended up with a completely full-term healthy, uh, baby. Um, he was born seven minutes after his due date, um, no issues at all. And then my sixth pregnancy, um, completely healthy pregnancy, um, and then during, um, delivery, uh, I was induced. I did have some excessive bleeding, um, kind of nothing that required a transfusion, but I did need some medication to make me stop bleeding. So I needed an injection of methogen and then I, I needed to have Pitocin run overnight. But the important part of that is that that baby, um, when she was two and a half hours old, started having apneic seizures. So she was holding her breath and having seizures when she was two and a half hours old, ended up, um, in a very, very sick, um, intubated. She was having one seizure after the other. She had to get transferred to another hospital. And in the long run, she ended up having, um, the diagnosis that she had had a stroke during birth that caused a brain hemorrhage, um, in her left temporal lobe. And she is okay now. She's two years old. She's fine. Again, there's a story about her. It's from seizures to success. That's on my channel. If you'd like to watch that as well. Um, but anyway, so two babies with strokes in utero, um, nobody was going, hey, um, what's going on? Why is this lady having these babies with strokes? Um, nobody tested me for anything. Unfortunately, I wish they had. Um, but my most recent pregnancy, number seven and final pregnancy, I cannot have anymore at this point. Um, it's a matter of my own safety and survival. Um, I developed placenta previa. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, um, you can watch my video. It's my placenta previous story, I believe, or something like that. Um, that's also on my channel for more in depth, but 
um, I basically, uh, started bleeding, um, at 11 weeks and, um, never stopped. I ended up in the hospital at 23 weeks, blood transfusions, the whole shebang, um, with an emergency C-section at 26 weeks and two days. And it turns out I had a, a chronic placental abruption, but that was due to a clot that developed because of the prothrombin gene mutation. Um, luckily she did not have a stroke. She's okay at this point. She's six months old, um, actual three months adjusted. So it's very important for you to go on Lovenox or baby aspirin or whatever, be tested for this. Do something about it. If you're pregnant, please do not take the chance. It's not worth it. If you're interested in the other parts of my story, please feel free to look for those other videos on my, um, channel. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.